Have you ever wondered why so many things in nature seem to be named after the devil? I recently just took a hike to something called the Devil's Bathtub, and now here today I am at Devil's Tower in Wyoming. Stick around to find out more about this fascinating geological formation and how many things in the United States are named after the devil. Devil's Tower has been studied by geologists since the 1800s and became protected in 1906 as a national monument, and it's open to enjoy the whole year around 24 hours a day. My mom and I actually hiked this a couple years ago during the winter time in like 15 degree weather, and it was so cold that our eyelashes actually froze. So I don't recommend this, but it is a joy to visit during the summertime. If you notice the rock of the tower and the surrounding area rocks, don't look very similar. And this is because while the Devil's Tower is made out of igneous rocks, the surrounding area is all sedimentary rock. For those of you who haven't thought about sedimentary or igneous rocks since grade school, here's a quick refresher for you. Sedimentary rocks are made from sediments. Geologists, like so many scientists, are incredibly creative. Sediments are tiny pieces of rock, bigger pieces of rock, even bigger pieces of rock, or even old plant matter or old animal matter, yes, that is an animal, that have accumulated over a period of time. And eventually so much stuff gets stacked on top of it that a tremendous amount of pressure occurs and it squishes all of that sediment, all of that stuff into a rock. And those are sedimentary rocks. Versus an igneous rock, which is formed not by the squishing of other material into a rock, but through volcanic eruptions, which means lava. And what lava is, is melted rock or liquid rock. And when those rocks cool down, because they can't stay hot in lava forever, they form solid igneous rocks. So sedimentary rocks formed from layers of sediment squished over a large period of time into a large rock. Igneous rocks formed from the cooling down of melted rock from a volcanic eruption. About 50 to 60 million years ago, this whole area was sedimentary rock, but the tectonic plates making up the Earth's crust were shifting and moving and eventually got uplifted and magma, or molten rock, started pouring underneath that sedimentary rock layer. Eventually it cooled into igneous rock and formed Devil's Tower. While we know that magma coming up from that plate boundary is what started the formation of Devil's Tower, Geologists still disagree on exactly how that magma cooled and how the tower came to be today. Here is a dramatic reproduction of scientists arguing. Well, clearly Devil's Tower formed this way. You fool, you call yourself a geologist? Do you think you have any idea what's going on here? Yeah, clearly it was formed by the stock method. No, clearly an old volcano. No, it was none of the above. Ah! Even with all of that arguing, there are a couple of theories that gain a lot of support for the formation of Devil's Tower. The first one is called stock, and this occurs when you have layers of the sedimentary rock, and then due to the break in the plate boundaries, magma can upflow into them and create an, basically an intrusion into the sedimentary rock layers. Over millions and millions of years, then the sedimentary rock layers get eroded away, we are left behind with the stock or this geological formation of igneous rock or the Devil's Tower. In another formation we have called a lacolith, which is very similar, but instead of simply just injecting itself into the sedimentary rock layers, the magma actually causes a kind of a mushroom cloud shaped formation and bends the sedimentary or bulges the sedimentary rock layers away and then again over time geologists think the sedimentary rocks got eroded along with some of the igneous rock which formed the shape of devil's tower today and then finally there is some theories put forth saying that it is volcanic in nature as in kind of the leftovers of an old volcano but there's not really any volcanic evidence surrounding the area to support this theory, but it may have been eroded away 
just like so many things have been through the time of the geological earth. There is not a lot of evidence to support that Devil's Tower is a remnant of an old volcano, but it may have just been eroded away over time like all of that sedimentary rock, and we'll never really know that for sure. On the hunt for the great American prairie dog. Devil's Tower actually used to be one to two miles underneath the ground here, covered by sedimentary rocks. And over millions and millions of years, all of that sedimentary rock got worn away, thus exposing the tower. You may be wondering why is this all left behind, but one to two miles of rocks disappeared. And that's because sedimentary rocks erode a lot faster than igneous rocks do, but the igneous rocks of the Devil's Tower are still eroding and can be seen here in this giant boulder field surrounding the tower, all made up of igneous rock that has fallen off this tower and made it into what it is today. Perhaps the coolest thing about Devil's Tower is that it looks like it's made out of individual rock columns. This is something called columnar jointing, and Devil's Tower has the largest example of it in the world. This is caused by the magma cooling to form those igneous rocks, and as the magma cools down, it shrinks, causing it to crack and when it does crack, it's going to do so along common stress points, which create a six-fold or hexagonal column shape. Although not every single column has six sides, and geologists still are not sure why there's this type of variation, but it makes for a really cool effect on the tower. Thanks for coming with me to Devil's Tower today. This is one of my personal favorite places to visit when I'm visiting my family in Wyoming because it's relatively close to our house and it's absolutely gorgeous and full of so much interesting geology and science that I think what you know about makes this place even more special to visit. Also, there are very cute prairie dogs, so why not enjoy it? I mentioned earlier about the fact there are so many places named after the devil in the United States. And did you know that there are actually more than 200 places in the state of California alone, named after the devil. That's, I feel like that's kind of unfortunate. Uh, but personally, if it were up to me, I would love to name a geyser Beelzebub's bidet. So that's my own personal putting forth a name for a natural landmark after the devil. <laughs> Thank you all so much for watching. Please like this video, subscribe to my channel, uh, check me out on Instagram, stay tuned for more sciencey adventures, and keep it sciencey.